Welcome to the second episode of DevOps for Developers. In this episode, we'll start off by understanding what it is we're trying to build. Let's take a look. What we have here is a typical request response cycle that happens when you type in a URL into your web browser. The browser in this case is making a request to the server and the server is responding with the answer to the client's request in the flavor that was defined by the client. So it may be HTML, JSON, JavaScript, whatever. It's very similar to real life situations. So imagine any of these scenarios. When a customer walks into the bank and asks to see his account history, the banker responds with a list of transactions. Same thing in a shop scenario, a library or a restaurant. It's no coincidence that web technologies are so good with dealing with these scenarios. Let's take a look at what goes on in a basic web server. So we have a web server that is basically listening on port 80 or port 443. In the case of HTTP, uh, it's 80 for the non-secure version and 443 for the secure version. So those are the default port numbers for HTTP and HTTPS protocol. Basically, when the request hits a server, there's some instruction in the web server that tells it what to do. In this case, we're just going to serve static files to the browser. Let's look at a more complex scenario. So serving static files are fine, they're fast, and there isn't much computation required. But what about dynamic sites? Sites that serve different data to different users? Well, the server has to be smarter. It now has to be able to store different content for different users and do computations based on each user's request. This is typically, typically a stack that we would see for dynamic websites. The web server sends the request, request through to the application server, and the application server is connected to all these services or components uh, in one way or another. Then it computes the answer and then spits the result back to the web server, and the web server simply returns the data to the client. So your application server can be written in pretty much anything, in Ruby, Python, PHP, uh, and so on. It connects to other components. The database is usually the most common component. Every dynamic site has to have some kind of data storage that it connects to. Your application sits behind the web server. This technique is usually called reverse proxy, where the proxy in this case is the Nginx server. It retrieves the response from another server and then spits it out to the client. You may be wondering why we don't just let the browser talk directly to the application server. Well, there's multiple reasons. Some application servers just can't handle secure SSL connections. You can use a reverse proxy to, as a load balancer. So for example, if you have a lot of requests coming in and you have three or four application servers running, you could use the load balancer to distribute the load between all your application servers. Proxies can act as a, a caching mechanism. So basically, some requests are repetitive. So you don't always need to recompute the result again and again. So the reverse proxy can be smart enough based on your configuration to figure out that, okay, we can use the cache for this request. We don't need to hit the application server. Here's the answer uh, to the browser. It can do data compression, so we can compress our assets, so CSS files, JavaScript files, and basically serve a smaller file back to the client so it's faster. It can handle request queuing for you. So if your application server is busy doing something, it can't accept requests, your reverse proxy can queue up requests. So when the resources are freed up in the application server, it can continue serving requests. Generally, in production, it's better to let your application sit behind a proxy such as Nginx or Apache. Let's conclude about what we just talked about. We have an Nginx web server that talks to our application server. Our app server then talks to all these other components like the data storage or our workers or the search engine or whatever it may be. Each component serves a purpose and it's being controlled by our application server. So basically, our application server is, if you will, like the godfather. He's like the puppeteer. Uh, he has connections to all these uh, components, and basically, 
he just tells all these guys, I need this done. I need you to go and do this. And basically takes all those results and put it back and then serves it back to the proxy server. I want to finish this video off with what I think a DevOps job is. A DevOps job is to ensure each component can run and talk to each other efficiently for as long as possible. Just something for, for you guys to think about. All right, in the next episode, we're going to get our hands dirty and we're going to start building our web server.